Hello friends and welcome to Kurt Bergman's Baseball World. Thanks for joining me today. I'm putting information about channel membership for my channel in the description for this video. I'd appreciate it if you check that out. It contains a lot of good stuff for you. Channel membership gives you discounts on the secondary store, access to exclusive members only videos, and a free gift from me every month in the form of PDFs that I create for different Sims. So today um, I'm responding to your questions about baseball classics, baseball classics about a month ago, yeah, a little less than that, about three weeks ago now, came out with a brand or a revised version of their standard game in a few months, they're going to be coming out with a revised version of their premium game. Uh, but you asked me to take a look at the standard game and let you know what changed. If you go to Baseball Classics website, it is still very difficult to, to navigate. But you can place an order for these revised uh, cards. Uh, and their revised game. They will send you the directions for free. They will also send you a free team um, that is with that goes with their new version of their uh, standard game. It's the 1970 Cincinnati Reds. So what I'm going to do in this video is to show you... Um, What's new? How has the game changed? This is not a full-blown tutorial uh, of baseball classics. I can do that if you would like. You can just ask me in the description for the video. But what this video is going to focus on is how is the game different? So let's, I don't want to confuse you by showing old cards and then new cards. All I'm going to say is the, the, the big change, and then I'm going to show you in specific detail here, but the big change for Baseball Classics standard version is that it's gone from a three-roll system for its... Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's three different versions of the standard game that you could do. Um, but for all but the most basic version of the standard game. It's gone from a three-roll system where you roll, first of all, on what's called their play-action simulator. Then you roll a second time for the outcome of the play. And then you roll a third time for an error check. So it's gone from a three-roll system for every at-bat down to a two-roll system if, again, if you're using the play action simulator. What I'm going to do is to show you how the new system works, and then you can make a decision for, on it uh, for yourself. The um, I'm not going to make an editorial judgment about the, uh, the price of the game. I know that that is a point of controversy among those of us in the hobby. Um about whether the game is overpriced. That's a separate issue. All I'm going to focus on is, and and the website is a separate issue. Um, all I'm going to focus on is showing you what the mechanics of the game are, how it looks if you play it now, and then uh, you can make a decision for yourself about whether the price is right for you. The other thing that I'll say I have ordered the cards and I have printed the 1970 Cincinnati Reds. So I'm gonna show you what the difference looks like between the two. There's a dollar difference in uh, the purchase price. Uh, it's a dollar cheaper to order the PDFs, which you can get for any of their teams. In the standard version of the game, as before, you can order any team in Major League history that you want to order. However, uh, for the standard version of the game, you get 24 players. That's it. So if you're looking for all the players that played on that team in a particular season, 
Baseball Classics is not going to provide that for you. Now they say, haven't seen this yet because it's not out, but they say in the premium edition, there will be 28 players per team. Again, probably, but possibly, not every player that played for the particular team you're looking for. Uh, and in the premium version, not every team is going to be available. It doesn't look like, but I don't know that for sure yet. So we'll, we'll have to stay tuned for that. All right. So with no further ado, let's get into the changes made by Baseball Classics for the standard version. Here we go. All right, so we will start at the start, which is with the play action simulator. Now this is what a, when you download the game and you print the charts that you need, and you can see from the dotted lines here, the hashed lines that you can cut these up so that they are approximately the size of playing cards um and so in fact i'll put a playing card that i have next to them so you can get an idea of the size that we're talking about this is a playing card so it's just larger than a playing card size you cut these up and your game becomes for baseball classics it becomes extremely portable all right, so the play action simulator is the first roll. You roll your dice, you get either, and this is the, uh, if you if you order the dice from uh, Baseball Classics, you can get a, a wooden die that looks like this. This is for reading the pitcher outcome, and this one is reading for, the, for reading the hitter outcome, and you can see that there's an equal number on all sides of the dice. So if you roll the hitter outcome, then you add up your numbers. So here, you're going to add, use three D6s, red, white, and blue, along with your white die, along with your wooden die. You roll it and you get your play action simulator result, which in this case would be a pitcher result and you add these together, one plus one plus two is four. And then you'd consult your play action simulator to see what the outcome would be in advance of the at bat. The key, the legend for the play action simulator is here. So you can have these two next to each other when you do your roll. And this is the first step in resolving your at bat. You can see from the legend, you could get a balk result. You could get catcher's interference, drop third strike, a balk, a pass ball, a hit by pitch, an injury, a pickoff attempt, a pitch out, a rain delay, spectator interference, an argument with an ump, an unassisted double play or triple play, and a wild pitch. All of that is from the play action simulator. All right, now. Uh, the second thing I want to show you now is the difference between the printed cards and the uh, PDF. So this is, these are the 1970 Reds. And I'm going to put the uh, one of the teams I ordered as a printed card was the 67 Red Sox. And you can see that Tony Canigliaro's card is right next to Angel Bravo and Bobby Tolan. And you can see, you know, I printed the PDFs on the highest quality print scan that I could do on my printer. So you can see that the PDFs are a little bit darker, but they're all readable. And they're almost exactly the same size as the cards. This is what the back of the card looks like. This is the front of the card. On the front of the card, you get uh, which way they bat. In Canigliaro's case, it's right. There's a bunting rating, a steal rating, and a run rating, just like there used to be. There's also an outfield defense rating. The ratings go <coughs> excuse me, from green to blue to yellow to red uh, in terms of uh, quality. 
uh, it gives you his position here and then all the cards as well as the PDFs give you a recommendation on where he fits in the batting order. So they have a, a sort of an advisor that tells you where to bat the player in the batting order. Then you get a full menu of statistics. And if you look at the right side for the hitter here, you can see that there's average, slugging percentage, isolated power, batting average on balls in play, and all the rest down the line. If a player has something that is especially good, it's in green. If it's especially poor, it's in red um, in their judgment. So they flag it for you. And that is true on the PDF as well. Pitcher cards look slightly different, as you might guess. But they are the same size. They give you stats for the pitcher as well. Um, the batting rating which way they throw, uh, defense, the which way they hit, and then they give you a batting rating. The batting rating tells you which pitcher hitting card to use. Those are generic uh, for you to use, and then they rate the pitcher as well. Now, if you choose, you can, as you can see from the, I'll hold this up again, for the pitcher hitting card, you can choose to do a pitch-by-pitch um, outcome, if you wish. Um, or you can go at bat by at bat. All right. So those are what the hitting cards look like. Now, to, now the first step, of course, is what I showed you. It's the play action simulator. The second step is to resolve the at bat. And then the third step, which can be done from the at bat role, is to resolve the defensive outcome of the play. So let's take a minute and talk about what's changed. Well, baseball classics used to go by, or the latest version before this one, used a wooden die to tell you which batter, which card to go off of, the batter or the pitcher. And then 3D6, so you'd have a 3 to 18 possibility on the cards. But now what they've changed is they have a 4D6 system. So the range goes, instead of from 3 to 18, it goes from 4 in the event that you would roll snake eyes on all 4, which, for whatever reason, I can't find. There we go. 4 to boxcars across the dial, 4 to 24. So if we come back to Tony C., you see that you have a possibility of a roll of a four all the way to 24 at the bottom. And this is your, your range of outcomes. Now, simply, if we get the clutter out of the way here, we can see if Lonborg and Canigliero were to face each other. I'll put them here so you can see them a little more easily. It's a pretty easy process to determine the at-bat. So let's look at it more closely. All right, so what do the cards tell us? Well, the uh, cards are color-coded, which if you are a visual learner, uh, this could be the game for you. Because if the result is an out but not a strikeout, you can see that the results are in red. Pop on Lonborg's card, a pop out, a ground out with an asterisk. I'll talk about that in a minute. A fly out, a ground out, a pop out, a line out, a ground out, and a fly out. On Canigliero's card, you get a fly out in the parenthetical, line out, uh, pop out, ground out, fly out, and double play. Hits are all in green. Asterisks tell you that the base runners, if any, move the minimum amount. So in a double, if there's a runner at first, he'd go to third and stop there. If it's a single with an asterisk, like here on Lonborg's card, he goes one base and stop. The runners go one base and stop. Uh, so that's green. Walks are yellow. 
and strikeouts are blue on both cards. So they get the kind of same kind of color system. If you roll the dice, you get an outcome. And you have to add up your four D6s. And they will advertise this for you as the reason they're able to be more precise. Because now instead of going 3 to 18, they go 4 to 24. So the batter die here tells you that you're going to look on Canigliero's card. You're going to add these four together. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 6 is 14. So we're on Canigliero's card. We're going to look at the 14, and it's a ground out. And resolving at bats is that simple. Now, if you want to go pitch by pitch, you can do the same thing. And just follow down that column instead. Or you could mix it up. You could go batter by batter, but then late in the game or for critical at bats, you could go pitch by pitch. There's a lot of detail, but basically that's how the uh, game works. Um, but now let's resolve what happens on the outs. Now we know from the 14 that it's a ground out, but how do you know what happens? Where did the ball go? Well, you have two choices. If you're playing uh, with the team fielding concept, you don't need to know. This is the most basic uh, outcome. This is for team fielding. So if you've played APA, you know about adding up all of the points for defense, and that gives you a result. Then you get to know based on that if an error happened on the play. Very simple, very easy. It's all based on this outcome. But if you want to do a more advanced, if you want individual fielding, there's a way to do that as well. So let's take a look at how that's set up. All right, now the first thing we need to know is where did the ball get hit? Now this is a ground out result, remember, on Canigliero's card. This is called dynamic individual fielding. The dye color we're gonna worry about is the blue one. They're reminding you of that by having blue printing on this result card. We know that it was a batter outcome, so we're going to look at the, we have an infield play. We have the batter die, because that's the one we rolled. And we have a three result. Now, the batter is a right-handed batter. Canigliero hit righty. So it's a three, right-handed batter, batter die. He hits a ground out to shortstop. Now, we know that's where the ball went. If it was the pitcher die, uh, it could go somewhere else. It could be an outfield play. We don't know. The die color is reminded for you right there on the card. So we have a ground out to short, but we don't know if the shortstop handled it well or not. So for that, we have to look at a separate card. All right, now I've left my die roll the same, same numbers, I haven't rolled a second time. So what we're doing now is we're looking at the batter die or the pitcher die to see if it's a tough play or an error. So um, the batter die here we add the green die and the white die together, and that gives us a number. The green, the, white, the green die is a six, the white die is a three, that's a nine, we have a blank. The shortstop threw out Canigliero at first with no trouble. If, on the other hand, we had come up with this result, a five on the pitcher die then, and we had a ground out to short. Then we would have to look at the fielding rating of the shortstop. 
and we take the blue die and the green die and add those together. So this would be a three plus a six is a nine. If our shortstop was rated blue and it comes up here, that's an error. He commits the error. How many bases does the error go for? We look down here, the number of bases chart, it's the red plus the white, that's a five. And it's an infield play and that would be a one base error on our shortstop. Now, so you've got the play action simulator if you choose to use it. Some people use it, I know some people don't. They just go right to the batter roll and resolve the at bat. Then you use the roll here to determine where the ball went, either for a hit or an error. And then you come here to see if the player fielded that ball cleanly. Again, hit or an error and see what happens from there. So one roll, five dice. Now you don't have to buy this one. You could go odds and evens. I was a pitcher, so like I would say pitchers are odd and batters are even. You could do that and not buy their dice. But if you choose to buy the dice, you can. You get this wooden die and that helps read the cards. But again, you wouldn't have to. Then you need dice of four different colors, preferably red, white, blue, and green because that's where their charts are made up. And you're ready to play. Now, so what's different? Well, this, the error checks uh, after the uh, resolution of the at bat used to mean that that was a third die roll to resolve your at bat. Play action simulator, at bat resolution, error check. Now, you got a play action simulator and a die roll to resolve the at bat. And then you take the result of that die roll and you're applying it to some charts. Now I've played four games with the new system and I've gotten pretty quick here. This looks like it would be a slow process, but it's not bad and I'm getting faster. So you kind of get the trick, the hang of how uh, the charts work and what you're looking for for an error and it, it works out it it's pretty smooth the big thing the big difference is they've cut one roll out of the process and if you don't use the play action simulator you're actually down to a one roll resolution of the vast majority of your at bats that makes gameplay very very quick even two rolls with the play action simulator is about average for the hobby. Um, so I was asked uh, what the differences are. What are the changes uh, to baseball classics uh, standard version? And this is it. You have PDF options or the printed cards that you see here. You can order either one. There's 24 cards per team. So if you're a stickler, if you're a stickler on having all the players, uh, but you want to try baseball classics, you might want to try a season or teams from a season earlier in last century, like a dead ball team, maybe a team from the 20s or 30s, because the owners were cheap and they were only using 24 players, 25 players, if they absolutely had to. If you're not a stickler about that, then a more modern team can certainly uh, fit the bill and you can give it a try for yourself. All right, so those are the changes to baseball classics. There is a revision to the premium version that they say is coming out this spring, March or April, and that one will be available as well. But again, for the premium version, the um, 
number of teams that are available is much more limited. All right. That's what we know today for Baseball Classics. Thanks for being with me. Don't forget to check out the information on channel membership in the description for this video. And let me know if you have questions uh, about Baseball Classics left in the comments below, and I will come back and try and answer them for you if possible. Thanks again for being with me. I hope you have a good night. So long, everybody.